Good morning, Selah, and all of those who are connecting from all over the world. We're so glad that you are here, and we pray that this is a place where you can feel welcome and encouraged through God's word and God's people. Don't forget, during this time, we have a live chat going on during the premiere, and we would love to say hi to you and catch your name and see how you're doing today. And if you have any prayer requests, we'd love to hear those. Here at Sela, we have three main goals, to know God, to love people, and to live purpose. We have different ways that we try and do that. Um, I am so grateful that God gave us this church right before the lockdown happened because this has been a time where I've been able to grow in my walk knowing God, to learn to love people more through my connect group and just through getting to know more people uh, here at the church and to live purpose. Different ways that I've been able to serve here at Selah that I probably never would have had had I not had this church family. I just want to encourage uh, everyone today as we go into a time of worship. And I just want to read a psalm uh, and a verse from a psalm. And then I also wanted to read one thing uh, that was an encouragement to me to prepare my heart for the time of worship today. So first of all, in Psalm 100, verse 4, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. You know, we uh, can't enter the doors of the church right now because of everything that's going on in this world that is so unprecedented. We can't go to church physically, but I'm so grateful that we have the opportunity to join as a church body during this time, to enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise as a corporal, as a body uh, of believers just to gather. Um, and I have a quotation that I wanted to read to you all um, from a well-known worship leader named Matt Redman. And he said about worship, in the end, worship can never be a performance, something that you're pretending or putting on. It's got to be an overflow of your heart. Worship is about getting personal with God and drawing close, close to him. So I just want to encourage you as we enter into this time of worship this morning that wherever you are, whatever you're going through, that together we can just, from the comfort of our home, be able to draw close to God, get personal with God, ask him to speak into your life, ask him to uh, use this time of worship to prepare your heart. So let's just jump right in uh, to that time of worship this morning.
Philippians 2, 8 through 11 says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Let's sing, death could not hold you.
allow that into our lives. Allow Him to have that control to where we can experience that. Let's just sing a little bit more about what a beautiful name, what a powerful name this morning. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful, what a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name you have. God. And I just pray for each and every single person watching this, God, that they could experience the power of your name, God, the powerful name of Jesus and the redemption, the saving grace that we can experience through his forgiveness and everything he did on the cross for us, God. I just pray that this morning you would refresh us, God. We just I just say sorry for everything that I've done, God, this week that would prevent me from having a more intimate encounter with you, God. And I just pray your powerful name, your powerful blood over my life this morning and over the lives of those in my church, God. And I just pray that you would speak to us this morning, God, in a fresh and new way. In Jesus' name. Hello church, what a great time we had to worship the Lord together. It is so good to know that through Christ and His blood and His sacrifice, we can go freely to Him and that He listens to us and that He cares for us. Now let me share with you some announcements and things that go on in the life of our church. Every Sunday at 11.30, we meet on YouTube and Facebook Live. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to receive a reminder when we go live. It is easy and convenient. Kids Church and Junior Church meet every Sunday on Zoom at 2 p.m. And the Connect Groups meet all over the city and the world right now. The point of the Connect Groups is to connect and fellowship throughout the week. You can head to salemonbuy.com connect for ways to get connected. Now's the time. Since all the groups are meeting virtually, you don't even have to leave your home. I wait every Wednesday when my Connect group gets together so we, I can chat and get, ex, get encouragement from all the different people in my Connect group. I love my Connect group and you should connect to one as well. Also, we have our Instagram page at Sela Mumbai. It is an easy way to stay connected throughout the week with uplifting messages and devotional. Give us a follow to see more. Your giving has continued to go above and beyond. Your faithfulness to give in such trying times has gone farther than our goals or family to support as we are giving in obedience to be Christ's hands and feet to those who are in greatest need. As a church, we are giving a total of 194 families so far. How a great way to show God's love and God's mercy this way. And I know that God is using your giving to impact many for the gospel and for many people to hear about the good news. Now, let's prepare our heart. We are going to a very important time in, in our service. Maybe the most important time. You know why? Because we open God's Word. God's Holy Word. So l let your heart be ready. 
and your mind be ready. Forget about everything that is going around you, all the different distractions around you, and let's focus in God's Word. Well, good morning, Sailor. It's been an incredible worship service so far. I'm so grateful for everyone who puts this together, all of you who are involved, and even those of you who are on this morning and are pushing into community, even on YouTube right now. Welcome along if this is your first time with us. We are so glad to have you along with us, and we would love to connect with you. Uh, we do other things outside of this. Um, we even connect together over over Zoom for different worship and prayer, prayer meetings and all sorts of different things we do, connect group meetings. We would love you to have a part, to be a part of this. So please, um, you can find our email on the website if you're new. And if you're not new, well, you know you're loved. You know that you're a part of this family. Um, we want to get around Christ together, learn from him and stick together through whatever life throws at us right let me pray for you father god i thank you for this time right now i pray in jesus name that wherever anybody is at this moment wherever this youtube video goes i pray holy spirit that you would go and just be with uh, everyone lord god and i pray as we open up your word today and as i preach this sermon today lord about joy Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would experience you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you into our houses right now. We welcome you into our rooms, wherever we are. We open our hearts to you right now, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I want to read from verse 9 of chapter 4, uh, where Paul says this. He says, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. We're not really talking about the first part of this verse. Um, the reason why Paul always said this, he says this several times in this book and other books in terms of the first part of it, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me um, or seen me do, put it into practice. The reason he said that is because they, they didn't have the Bible like what we have the Bible. So Paul and the disciples were the initial primary sources of what it was to be a follower. So he would encourage them to, to follow. And we, we need the Bible and we need each other to grow in the Lord, right? But the second part is what I want to focus in on, which says, And the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. This word stuck out to me this week as I was studying these verses. And... I just looked into what this word peace actually means because when I read and the God of peace will be with you, I, I say, well, I want some of that. I, I think all of us want peace. I think if we could just have an internal peace and a sense of peace, no matter what face, no matter what we are facing, no matter what circumstances come our way, I think we can win right and here's Paul talking about God but not just God in in a in a kind of non-descriptive way but the God of peace and this is a part of who God is and this is Paul um, talking about God in his own experience of Jesus his own experience of God this word peace um, is a word arene in in Greek and it means this is the state of well-being and harmony the state of well-being and harmony so so it's like paul saying may the god of a state of well-being and harmony and harmony is not just harmony with nothing harmony kind of means with each other so there's an aspect of one another in this word with others so it's the god of a state of well-being and harmony this is paul's experience and we have to remember that paul is in prison he's writing to the philippians who are facing some pretty bad persecution they are also in the midst of some conflict in their church um, so in the midst of all of these circumstances 
that Paul has and the Philippians have. He's saying the God of peace, the God of well-being and harmony will be with you. And he's teaching through experience. But my question is, this is what is Paul doing to experience the presence of God like this? What is it that he has that others don't? How, how is it that Paul's experience has been that this Jesus is the God of peace, the God of well-being and harmony? Well, he actually teaches it just before this. Um, but it doesn't start off how we would think. Okay, He starts off in verse 4 of the same um, chapter, in chapter 4. He says this, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Now, Paul doesn't give this as a suggestion. He gives it as a command. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I say it again, rejoice. Rejoice. Now, this word is a word, Cairo. Okay, I'm doing a bit of Greek <laughs> study because we're really diving into the scripture at the moment. Um, this word, rejoice, Cairo, is to be in a state of gladni- gladness, um, happiness, or well being. And this word that Paul uses to rejoice, or Cairo, is is a word that requires action on someone's part. It's an action that we need to almost choose. Uh, it's an action of gratitude for what God has done. And it's, it's actually choosing happiness. So what Paul is saying almost is in simple language would be to say, be happy in the Lord. Be happy in the Lord. Have a sense of well-being in Jesus. That's what he's saying. It's an action word. It's not, it's not a passive word. It's something that we, we, we do. You understand? So, <laughs> what is Paul talking about? How can one rejoice in the Lord? Well, let's think of it, think, let, let's think of it like this. Uh, ha, have you ever... Have you ever put a hashtag on one of your Instagram posters or, uh, sorry, not posters, on one of your posts uh, or on your Facebook or, or, or something, or you've seen someone with the hashtag G- TGIF, TGIF, thank God it's Friday, or just before summer comes, um, uh, there's the hashtag summer vibes with a Z. Not an S with a Z, summer vibes, because that's just cooler, yo, okay? Or, not maybe we'll get away from social media. You know that, that feeling when Christmas comes? And you just, you're like, you know what, I just want to forget everything, it's, it's Christmas time. I don't care what's going on, or maybe Chris, Christmas isn't something that you've experienced, maybe it's another festival. But when these festivals come around, it's like, you know what, I don't care what's going on. I'm just going to be happy in this moment because it's festival time. This is what, essentially what Paul is saying. He's saying, even though you might have all of this stuff going on, you need to choose to find happiness in Jesus. There needs to be a, an action. You need to take action to actually step into the joy that's in Him. And we do this in other aspects of our life, like when that great festival comes around or when it's Friday, we, you might have a whole work week or three months of projects in front of you and work and meetings and more and more Zoom calls ahead of you. But because it's Friday, you know what? I've had enough. I'm just going to down tools and I'm going to be happy because it's Friday. T-G-I-F. I got the summer vibes going on because it's summer. Uh, you know, your life could be absolutely terrible. But you know what? Summer. Let's just enjoy summer. <laughs> we need to do this in Jesus. We need to sometimes just stop and go, you know what? Pause. Take a sailor moment and just go, you know what? I'm going to find happiness in Jesus. So I thought as a way of helping you to remember this, I would come up with a new acronym. T-G-F-G. 
Okay, look at the person next to you if you've got someone with you and say, TGFG, TGFG. What does that stand for? Thank God for the gospel. Thank God for the gospel. You can, we can maybe start selling some merchandise now. TGFG instead of WWJD. TG, you know, if you know what that is, you can put your hand up and say, I'm a, you know, I get special credit in heaven. TGFG. Thank God for the gospel. This is what Paul is kind of saying. He's like, rejoice in the Lord. TGFG. Why don't you start to think of some of the great things about God, what he's done for you, maybe in your past, about those moments where he's just come through in some miraculous miraculous way. And if you can't think of that, think of the gospel. Think of the gospel. Think of the fact that though we were sinners and broken in our sin and destined for destruction, that our big brother came, Jesus, as an act of, of obedience to the Father, whom loved us so much that He sent His Son so that we, whom choose Him, we can have life in Him. That's something to rejoice in. And when you read the Bible, and when you read God's Word, and when you pray, if you can start from that place, sometimes I think we start from a place of, oh, woe is me, the sky is falling, and... And that can almost, I mean, I get it. It's, I have moments like that. But as I've been studying this, I've been going, you know what? I think a really good practice would be to, to do what Paul is doing here. He has got some terrible circumstances going on, much worse than you and I might have right now. If you've got the ability to watch this on a device and you're sitting on some sort of comfortable thing. Listen, Paul wasn't comfortable when he wrote this. He was in jail. And this is not like, this is before human rights had anything to do with anything. I mean, who knows what the jail cell was like. I don't think it would have been that great. And here he is saying, no, let's, 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 let's make a choice here to rejoice in the Lord. Let's, let's actually take control over this very thing up here and say, I'm in control here. And I'm going to rejoice in the Lord always. And then he makes it, uh, you know, he hits it home again one more time. He says, and again, I say, rejoice in the Lord. I got my summer vibes going on with Jesus right now. T-G-F-G. Thank God for the gospel. Now, to the readers or to the people whom Paul was writing to, in, in those days, in antiquity, they... They, they were trained to just kind of accept whatever their status was um, and, and accept it and accept the difficulty uh, with patient endurance since everything was under control of the divine. So the, the pious things to do was not to complain, was not to say anything. They were quite stoic in their approach to God, um, probably also because they didn't have or didn't understand the gospel like we understand we didn't have this concept of 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 walking through life with the holy spirit in our lives the the spirit of christ with us right so god was very distant but they still wanted to be pious so they would approach it with a with a with a sense of well i don't i don't want to upset god by complaining i'm just going to accept my lot um, in, in, in this modern time, when difficulty comes, when we go through hard circumstances, we begin to think of other things, right? We don't necessarily just accept the circumstances. We try to change them, and sometimes that works out. Sometimes we learn that we actually have no control whatsoever over anything, right? Um, but, you know, some of the things now that we have, if you want to change your circumstances, if you want to have a better life, you know, dream big and uh, the sky's the limit. Um, and we, we, we will have all sorts of positive confessions. Don't, don't say anything negative because you wouldn't want, you know, there's power in your tongue and what you say. And, you know, it's the secret, right? You've got to say all the right things for what you want. Um, and, and also today, in this day and age, when times get tough, people just escape. Right? We can escape into the internet with whatever's there, whatever we can stream. We can escape into some sort of substance. And, you know, if you've 
able to do that. And there's all sorts of things now that we have in this modern day uh, when times are tough. But Paul's instructing us from his place of hardship. He's instructing the Philippians. In tough times, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Go to Him. The problem with our modern day kind of approach to life is when the dream's not working out, when we realize, yes, the sky's the limit, but I seem to be limited by some sort of glass ceiling and I've said all the right things, I've said all the positive confessions and my uh, whatever form of escapism I had, I'm bored with or it's taken over and I'm, I can't control it anymore. We get to this place where we just actually hit rock bottom with nothing and we realize man there's got to be something more to life there is it's in the gospel it's in the fact that we have we can approach god who created us we can have a relationship with us with him and he begins to walk with us he he begins to show us and it's all written out here in the bible it's all written out for us it's all here He's right with us, present in this moment, in the form of the Holy Spirit. But our first base needs to go to Him. Rejoice in the Lord, always. And I said, again, rejoice. We need to take control of our minds sometimes. You might have um, some psychological uh, struggles. And I'm... I'm, I'm saying this with care to you because maybe you need to pull in someone to help you alongside, to get alongside you, maybe a medical professional or someone like that to help you with these things. But you can do that as well as put your hope in the Lord. And you'll find as you talk through whatever you need to talk through with that medical professional and go through whatever steps are needed, coupled with this, that you'll be okay. Sometimes we need to step up. And for those of you who are in a situation where you need to step up, I would encourage you to take that step. But, but don't do it without knowing this. Because what will keep you moving forward, what will help you with your hope, what will help you with your sense of purpose and your sense of destiny, your calling, is understanding that Jesus loves you so, so much. And he's given everything for you to be restored back into relationship with Him. We've got to choose to rejoice in the Lord. The second part that Paul goes into in verse 5, he says this after verse 4, he's, obviously, he says, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So first he talks about our state of being. Our state of being is to rejoice in the Lord. That's the state of being. That's our state. That's what we need to begin to train ourselves to do. Okay? Our state of behavior, and this ties up with the rest of the Gospels and Jesus' teaching and the other books in the Bible that are there. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. What Paul's kind of saying here is, Unless, unless you're able to let God's love be working through you and determining your actions and the way you treat others, you're not allowing God to work in you um, in the fullness of what or how God can work in you in this moment. So, so let your gentleness be evident to all. The other, the other side of this is Paul makes it real. See, if, if, they, if he didn't put this in to this little passage, it would just be a, a pursuit where you've got joy in the Lord, you're doing all the right things, but it doesn't matter how you treat others. But we know from the rest of the Bible that you know, the commandment, right, is to love God and to love each other that's the greatest of commandments so so we we have to be be letting our gentleness be evident to all has your gentleness been evident to all this week if not might be time to apologize and say sorry the lord is near is paul giving a pretty <laughs> it's like you, you know god's with you right 
you know that he's there with you in all of this. Let your gentleness be evident to everyone. So that's our state of behavior. First is our state of being, rejoicing in the Lord. Second is our state of behavior, gentleness. Third, okay, is in verses 6 to 7. He says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition. Petition means simply to ask. Bring your petitions to the Lord. A lot of people think maybe God's too busy to hear my petitions. No, He's not. He wants to hear from you. Okay, prayer, just approaching God, talking to the Lord. I don't know what to pray about. Well, start with reading the Bible. It'll teach you what to pray. And you can ask of God anything. Okay, with thanksgiving. So that's how we do it, with thanksgiving, with a spirit, with an attitude of thanksgiving to the Lord. Present your requests to God and, listen to this, and the peace of God, which transcends all uh, all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isn't that interesting? So as you begin to take your prayers, your petitions with thanksgiving, and you present these requests to God in the midst of whatever, you'll find that this peace that transcends our understanding, we may not understand the circumstance, but there's this peace that comes and guards our hearts and our minds, no matter what, in Christ Jesus. Interesting, isn't it? When we begin to take our thought life and our processes and the way we do life, put Jesus first, rejoice in the Lord always, to make that decision. As a result, as we step towards it, as a result, the peace of God which transcends our understanding protects our minds and protects our hearts and then fourth is verse 8 he says finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble noble whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things Think about these things. Whatever's true, whatever's noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about these things. This is where we make a choice to put in the right information in order to get out the right results. Um, I think... For those of us who uh, may watch a lot of TV and stream a lot of what's on the different platforms out there now, there's a lot of stuff that isn't so noble, that isn't really true, that isn't right, that isn't pure, that isn't lovely, it's not admirable, it's not excellent, it's not really praiseworthy, but we're trying to chill out at night time or, you know, we've had a long day and we're just watching what is popular amongst you know pop culture and all of that sort of stuff um, listen be careful what you're putting in to your eyes into your spirit uh if if you've been putting in all of this sort of the opposite to all of this i guess i'll just call it rubbish what what do you expect to get out from it and and here's paul in the in in jail in a pretty perilous circumstance saying something that can help us right now and it's it's not exactly that spiritual really it's not such a spiritual thing that paul's saying it's it's pretty practical actually 
but discipleship isn't just spiritual. There is some practical elements of discipleship. And he's teaching these Gentiles, these new Christians, these new believers over in Philippi, saying, guys, in terms of your thinking, what you need to be doing is making sure that you're thinking about these things. The things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. They're the things to be looking out for in life, to focus in on. So, so here, we, we kind of have this really interesting... Um, we're coming to the end of the book. So, so it's, we're beginning to move towards uh, Paul's summarizing and concluding thoughts. But in these few verses... <laughs> There's just so much packed into it. He basically gives us a metric that if we were really to apply it to our lives and take a step to go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do this, it would make a massive, huge difference. Um, first, our state of being. Rejoice in the Lord. TGFG. Thank God for the gospel, man. Thank God that he's with us. Thank God that we've been gifted the Holy Spirit, that we can invite Him in. You can invite the Holy Spirit into your life right now if you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Rejoice in the Lord. And then we watch our behavior. Let our gentleness be evident to all. I mean, gosh, life is just going to get better if you are gentle to everyone that you come across. People are going to, well, people might like you more. <laughs> if you've got people that don't like you in your life, it's maybe, maybe, it might not be, but it may be just because you've not been gentle. And you're saying whatever and you're doing whatever. and <sighs> Everyone, the Lord is near, okay? So we've got our state of being, rejoicing in God. Our state of behavior, gentleness. The state of our prayer life, what do we pray about? We pray about absolutely everything. Oh, am I allowed to pray about uh, everything? Yes, you can pray about whatever you want to pray about. Take your prayers and petition to God. And how often can I pray? Always. Paul says that in other parts of the Bible. He says, be praying like always. Pray, 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 pray. Be a prayer. If you know how to pray in tongues, pray in tongues all the time. It's a gift that you have. And you can, you can just be praying in the Spirit all the time. Be a prayer. Full time. Be praying all the time about everything. You know, how, how many times I, I, I've been in traffic and uh, I just thank God for this. Now, if I'm just talking away to myself, to Jesus, people look at me and they think I'm on the hands-free phone. But before hands-free phones, I'm showing my age here, uh, before devices, if you were driving uh, in the car and you were talking, people would just kind of stare at you. would be like, is there anybody else in the car with them? Uh, they're a little bit crazy. They're talking to themselves. And now we can just pretend we're on the phone. You're on the phone to Jesus. How often? All the time. Be praying. If you've not been praying, I want to remind you, pray all the time. Bring your prayers and petitions with thanksgiving. Present your requests to the Lord. And there will be a peace. And maybe, maybe some things that you don't understand. I don't know won't work out i don't know but there will be a peace that will guide your heart and mind in the process of that and there's other passages in the bible all things work together for those who trust in the lord may not turn out the way you thought it would but in christ it will work together for good you just got to trust him okay where was i state of behavior our prayer life and then fourthly our thought life our thought life be careful to cultivate your thought life. Our mind is kind of like a garden. In a garden, if you've ever tried gardening, you don't have to do anything to let the weeds grow up. They just grow up. You don't have to do anything to think. Uh, to You know, when, when my kids, uh, they're growing up, we didn't have to teach them how to be naughty. Somehow they were just naughty, okay? Um, I don't know if it was from my side. 
Uh, I'm not going to say anything, but no, it was all my side. <laughs> uh, but I didn't have to teach my kids how to be naughty. I, when, if you've got a garden, you don't have to teach, you don't have to plant seeds of like weeds into your garden. They just grow. And it's the same with your mind. You don't have to do anything and weird, weird stuff will come out of your brain. Like things that you're like, whoa, how did I think that? You know, all of the the worst of our thought life can come in and you know I, I you know we've got this whole movement of being you know looking within i look within myself and i get scared okay at at at, at what is in me sometimes I, I don't know if you're the same but as we cultivate cultivate the the garden of the mind we begin to look for things that are true. I mean, the God, well, God's Word, this is why we start, this is why we have a devotional life. This is why we have a sailor moment every day where we get God's Word open in our lives and and we pray. Um, and I know Jacob's been putting out uh, a uh, uh, like a study that you can use. And we put that out as a church to help you to have those moments where you're focusing in on whatever's true, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. But we can begin to cultivate our minds to be putting the right stuff in. So Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. Have this state, the rejoicing state of being. Have a gentleness state of behavior. Be praying and bringing your petitions, everything with thanksgiving. Be praying all of the time. Have a prayer life and let your thought life be true and noble. And then he says the verse that I started with. And the God of peace will be with you. He says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me. See, Paul has exemplified all of these things in his context, in what he's being in, in jail. And he's saying, put all of these things into practice. And here's the promise. And the God of peace, the God of well-being and harmony will be with you. Now, know this, that this is not something that we can do on our own. This is something that we do in tandem with the Holy Spirit as we surrender to Him and allow Him. And this is not something that, like, there's going to be moments where you won't know what to pray about. There'll be moments where your thought life will just be all over the place. There, there'll, be, there'll be moments where you'll be just like, I don't want to rejoice in the Lord. I just don't because I'm angry or because I'm this or because I'm that. But as we surrender and become Christ-centered, this is not a self-centered approach to life. This is a Christ-centered approach to life. And this is how Paul lived. And it's how we can live. As we rejoice. As we practice gentleness. As we pray. As we cultivate our minds. As we do this with Christ at the center of it all. You'll find that the peace of God. Or the God of peace. The God of peace. The God of well-being. And harmony will be with you. Will be with you. Now the fact is, is he was always there. It's the Holy Spirit. He's not fixed to any location. He's not fixed to a church building. He's not fixed to a temple. He's not fixed to all of these things that we think he's fixed to. He's with you right now. He was always there. But as you remove all of the distractions of life, put aside all of the stuff. And stop. Rejoice in the Lord. Begin to thank Him that He is a good God and that He's made a way for you. He's given you the gift of the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that was present in the beginning of the world. The Word that God spoke over, the, over creation to bring order to this entire world and bring in life. 
that same Ruach, that same Spirit is with you. He was always there. It's just you become aware of it as you put aside all of the other things and stop. The God of peace is with you. Jesus, we come to you here right now. We stop. God, we, we approach you with thanksgiving in our hearts. I thank you, Lord, that though I was separated from you because of my own sin, you, Jesus, died on the cross for me. And you died on the cross for every one of us here today so that we could have life in you and not just any life, eternal life. A purpose and a calling and a destiny. We thank you, Lord God. We come rejoicing that you have given us life, the very breath in our lungs, that we have a life to live, Lord God, that we're still about, we're still doing our thing, Lord God. You've called us to it. And we don't have to fear even death, Lord God, because of what, your, you, what you have done on the cross. God, we thank you. Oh God, we rejoice in you. We rejoice in the Lord. Let's rejoice in the Lord. Always. <laughs> Always. TGFG. Thank God for the gospel. Oh Lord, help us to be gentle. Lord, we repent where we have just not been gentle. With our kids, with our spouses, with our work colleagues, with the people whom we employ, with our staff. God, we repent of that. Let our gentleness be evident to all, Lord God. Lord, help us to have a strong prayer life. God, we come to you once again. We put aside our shame at the cross, Lord God, and accept your forgiveness once again. Whatever has caused us to feel separate from you, Lord, we reconnect once again. In Jesus' name. Lord, help us. Holy Spirit, I pray. For those of us in our group who may struggle in our own thought life, Lord, help us to begin to cultivate the right things. Lord, help us to develop new habits, even in every aspect of our life, even with what we do in our leisure time, Lord God, and what we do here and there, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be cultivating a state of mind that we're focusing in on the on the true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy things of life that you've put all around us, but we sometimes just don't stop to see. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the Bible. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is here, it's true, and it's always accessible. Help us, Lord, to be going to it. We thank you, Lord God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit who's present with us right now. Strengthen, Lord, every person, every one that's with us on this YouTube channel right now, God, in Jesus' name. Let us know you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, I've got another week of this, I think. I'm just having so much fun with you all in the book of Philippians. So make sure you tune in next week if you want to be a part of a Zoom Connect where we discuss this and we go even deeper into God's Word, let us know. Hit us up on the website. We're right there waiting for you. We love you. We're praying for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Church, I have a question for you. How does God feel about you right now? And how do you determine that? Well, I stand before you with a confession. You know, sometimes when I had had a good week, when my daily devotions had been consistent, when my week had been productive, or if I had delivered a gospel-centric communion message, and when I was praised and applauded by my church family, I would feel so close to God. I would be like, God, here I am. What an amazing, good Christian week it was. You must be so pumped to see me here. On the other hand, there were some not so Christian weeks where 
I had fallen to some temptations where I wasn't gentle and loving to my parents or when I watched way too much YouTube when I was supposed to read my Bible. Well, in those weeks, I would feel distant from God. I would feel his lack of approval over my life. That's because I didn't understand the gospel or many times I forgot the gospel. So the question is, what is the gospel? The gospel is that Christ has suffered the full wrath of God for my sins. Jesus Christ traded places with me, living the perfect life that I was supposed to live and dying the death I was condemned to die. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the great exchange where Jesus took my record and died for it and offers me his perfect record in return. He took my shameful nakedness to clothe me with his righteousness. When I receive that grace in repentance and faith, full acceptance becomes mine. He lived in my place and died in my place and then offered to me a gift. Theologians call that gift righteousness. That means God could not love me any more than he could right now because God could not love and accept Christ any more than he does. And God sees me in Christ. God's righteousness has been given to me as a gift. He now sees me according to how Christ was, has lived not on the basis of what kind of week I've had. Church, just let that sink in for a moment. Right now, if you're in Christ, when God looks at you, regardless of your situation, he sees the righteousness of Christ. If we really believe that, not only with our heads, but also with our hearts, it would change everything in our lives. For most of us, this is completely counterintuitive. Martin Luther said, that our hearts are hardwired for works righteousness. That is the idea that our performance determines how God feels about us. Unless we are actively preaching the gospel to ourselves daily, we fall back into works righteousness. Guess who loves us to evaluate ourselves based on our performance? Our enemy, Satan. No wonder the book of Revelation calls him the accuser of our brothers. One of Satan's most effective weapons is making us forget the identity the Father has declared over us in Christ and basing our sense of approval on how well we have done. Church, let this be your prayer for this week. In Christ, there is nothing I can do that would make you love me more and nothing I've done that makes you love me less. So let's partake the communion elements today. Let's take the bread that represents the body of Christ. Remember church, he who knew no sin became sin so that we will become the righteousness of God. Declare this gospel identity over your lives and preach it to yourself without ceasing. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful for the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to constantly remember this gospel identity and let us build our lives based on this identity that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's uh, partake the bread. Let's take the cup that represents the blood of Christ. Let's approach his throne of grace with boldness and receive Jesus' renewed forgiveness and grace. And church, so let's pray. Father God, we come to your throne of grace with boldness and we confess our sins and we come to our heavenly high priest, Jesus. And Jesus, help us to be quick repenters and come to you constantly and forgive us and we receive your renewed grace and your renewed uh, forgiveness God in Jesus name I pray let's take the cup amen church I pray that 
you will constantly remember this cons- this gospel identity throughout the week and have a blessed week. Well, that's all we have for this Sunday. We pray that you've been blessed and that God has spoken to your life. We hope that maybe this week would be your week to go ahead and take the plunge and get connected with the Connect Group. All of our leaders would love to have you. If not, we can't wait to see you next Sunday during our premiere. Um, And maybe you can chat with us in that live chat next Sunday. Have a great week, everybody, and God bless.